Howdy folks, my name is Darren from RC Scan Models and today we're going to be building the Swedish CV90. Let's do this. Okay folks, right, the uh, wheel assembly is basically two halves. It's just simply just glue them together and they come out like this. And then plus on the wheel assembly you have these circle pieces and they sit on the inside of the, of the wheel um, this one's already done you will have to go ahead and do them to all of the wheels and there are some on the back they are quite fiddly as as for the uh, bogies for the uh, side of the vehicle you can't really mess this up because they've got these little notches and they just slot in don't even need any glue they're such a tight fit so we're going to go ahead and do the suspension do the wheels and I'll show you what it looks like Okay folks, the next section here is the back door. We're going to have to remove these two tabs and these little handles because there is an armour plate that sits over this door to make it a little bit more thicker. This is what we have to do on, on this variant that we're building. Okay, these two segments. Here's the back door. We sanded off those pieces. Here's the armour plate. The armour plate simply just gets glued into place. On the other side, there are some grab handles and stuff like that. I'm not going to bother with that because the door's going to be closed and you're not going to see on the inside so I don't see, see the point of putting the grab handles on. So, just grab some glue, we'll plaster this all over. And then it's simply just fit the uh, armour plate. We put some clamps on and the next step is to work on this on the outside we have got some boarding ladders and we have some spades but I'm going to put the spades on last okay folks here's a little tip for you the featherettes you get with the uh, kit comes with two plastic sheets to protect it peel off one side leave the other side on and when it comes to uh, cutting your photo which off away from the uh, like uh, fret because there's a uh, sticky back in it's less likely for the parts to uh, bend and go flying because they're stuck to the uh, plastic and you can peel them off nicely okay my friends the back door is all finished now this is probably the most trickiest part I've found for this kit so far is putting this boarding ladder on sticking these grab handles attaching the door itself without any of this trying to bend this little bit of fellow etch here is not too bad but this making this ladder is really really tricky um, I've had to do it off camera because it was so fiddly I did try filming it but I end up swearing a few times so I just quickly uh, get it done and I'll show you what it looks like now this is ready to uh, mount on the back of the tank This is going to sit on here.
Now this is ready to mount on the back of the tank. And that's going to pretty much slot in there. Um, and then we can attach the uh, upper turret and start working on the uh, upper, upper structure. Okay folks, the next step is attaching the upper hole to the lower hole. Here you have two pins. They respond with these two pins at the bottom. It's a case of just carefully lining them up. Is awkward. There's that one and that one. And then the back of the vehicle just simply just slots into place as well. And press down the front. So here's the uh, wheels done. The back is all, all complete. We have got to run a run a small bead of glue across the back. And then on the front glacier has got to go on and run a bead of glue on here. Some fenders dry sprockets and then we're ready to work on engine decks, covers and then the turret so that's our next step. Okay the next step is basically attaching the hatches. These back doors come as two halves just glue them together and it's a case of just dropping them into place like that. You have the uh, front uh, driver's hatch or vision ports I think that is that comes as two halves and then the actual vision ports they're not clear unfortunately on this one so you're going to have to paint them like a blue colour but that hatch just goes in there and we do get these two pieces they just slot in that's the wrong one this slots in slots in the front there and this one slots in the front there as for the grills, there's photo etch here, and there's a photo etch grill to go in, in here. That's, that's this one. That's simply just going to get slotted in there. And then you've got your photo etch grills. It's going to sit on there. So we'll go ahead and glue that into place now on the tray. What it looks like. Okay folks, these two segments here make up the uh, return roller. Again, you can't really mess this up. There's a little notch and it just gets glued into place into two halves, just like this one. Again, this is the dry pocket. It has little notches on the back, so you can't really mess it up. And it looks like this. Okay folks, this piece here is the front glacier. And this simply gets slotted in, into here. There is a bit of a groove. We're going to run a bead of glue along here. And that's pretty much it. So it's a case of just running a bead of glue on the bottom. And you can run a bead of glue along the front here. Squeeze this tightly just to lock it into place. That should be a good one. There is some here and here are some top towing eyes to go on. Um, as for the side skirts, here, here, and here correspond to these three pins on the back of the side skirt. The side skirts pretty much just gets locked into place. Um, like this and we're going to run a bead of glue along the top you can put some blue on those tabs which is hidden down the side skirt um, but this is the side of the vehicle as for these side skirts I've actually changed my mind I'm not going to stick them on just yet I'm going to put the tracks on um, and then put the side skirts on so we go ahead and paint the vehicle as normal and then do the wheels and whatever paint the side skirts and get the tracks done then put the tracks on and then we can go back and glue these on separately okay folks I want to talk about tracks they come as separate links you put the, the, the uh, track pads in they just glue in simply 
I like to do them in links of three. Um, if you do too many, the track can have a tendency to want to start to curve on you. How I do that is get two or three links together, start to glue them, and then I use a cocktail stick just to straighten them up. Um, each end, just to keep them straight. Once you've got a nice long enough run going, it can look like this. This is the part of the main track. I was going to fit, start fitting it to the tank and having it starting to wrap itself around. <clears throat> and I was going to try and have it so it was easy to take off and paint. But I uh, looked into the instructions and I thought about it and I thought, no, I'm not going to do that. It's too tricky. I'm going to just build it on, on the vehicle like this and then paint it on, on the vehicle um, I, I don't like these tracks they don't go together very well um, so this is what we come up with okay folks actually I've changed my mind I've, I've gone ahead and glued the uh, tracks straight to the vehicle and this is how I'm going to leave it we're going to paint them on the vehicle as they are Okay folks, the vehicle is all complete now, just before painting and weathering. This is a completed model, what it can look like. It was a fun build. The only major issue that I did not like with this kit was the uh, plastic tracks. I had a hard time getting them to wrap around and set properly, but we've done the best we can. The side skirts go on nicely. Unfortunately, the barrel doesn't go up and down. Because you get a photo etch piece at the top here, which technically on the real vehicle would be like a uh, canvas type thing. But they've given you it in photo etch. There's nothing else in the kit that you can use. So obviously when you glue that down on top of the vehicle, because um, it's glued to the back plate as well of the turret, I'll show you when it comes around. Stop it right there. The back plate is glued to the turret and it's glued to the turret itself, so therefore the turret, the uh, main gun can't go up and down. Um, but that's not a problem. But the turret does, the turret does rotate. Um, it's a little bit wobbly. That's to do with the uh, turret ring and the actual turret itself. There is, there's slightly different sizes um, but other than that there is no major issues with the kit these fellow extra parts go down nicely smoke the charges go on nicely the turret goes together nicely I have got a couple of tools to put on but I like to do that at the end um, the back part there's a couple of tools to go on but again I'll do that at the end um, Detail is pretty good. It's a not bad kit. Okay folks, we're going to start painting it now. We're going to start painting it in NATO black as a base colour and then we do the white. <laughs>
Okay, our next step is to do the tracks. We're gonna uh, do dry brushing, and it's a custom mixture of red, brown, and uh, black. We're gonna do a little bit of silver over the tracks. We're gonna have to tidy up the rubber wheels. We're gonna use rubber black for that. Okay folks, the tracks are all uh, dry brushed with a little bit of silver and the uh, like a rusty colour. Now you can see I've started to uh, touch up the uh, rubber pads. There's not much difference between Mr Hobby Rubber Black and NATO Black, there's not much difference. Um, the pads are, I've only got a light brushing over them just to uh, tidy them up a little bit, stop the uh, overspray that I had from when I sprayed the vehicle white and whatever just to tidy the pads up a little bit by the time we've come to put pigments and weathering st stuff all over it it's all going to blend in anyway so our next step is to finish off this plus we need to tidy up some of the uh, road wheels because they've got a little bit of overspray Okay folks, we want to talk about this uh, tank, I uh, did do the decals, I've gone ahead and done them uh, in advance, I did try and film it but unfortunately I screwed the decals up, the UN on the front folded up on me, so I had to, to scrap it and I lost, getting a little bit angry and stuff because it, it screwed up on me so I didn't bother filming it. Um, but lucky enough I have two of these kits because I want to do enough one at a later date because it is a pretty good kit. I do want to do this in the green version, but as I say, because I already had another set of decals, I managed to get these ones to go down, but this time instead of doing them as a U and a N together, because that's how they come, I've separated them and done them individual letters, and they've gone down a much better. They are a little tricky to get lined up, because there's no carry film in between the middle, so the uh, straight parts tend to want to wobble. But they've gone down now nicely, our next step is to clear coat this and give it a wash. But as I say, the vehicle is pretty cool. It, this is what I've come up with now. Um, as I say, the next step is weathering. Okay, folks, our next step is how I do tools. And this is how I'm going to do the tools on this vehicle. They call out for your tools to be painted in the white, which I've already gone ahead and done. As we're going to do for chipping, for the metal, I like to use Tamir's FX56, which is a uh, metallic grey colour, which is not 
pure silver it's a little bit darker I like to use that for chipping and for the rusty effects I like to use a custom mix of red brown and black it's roughly about even even mix so standard chipping techniques get some foam sponge that you can get from packaging material Eddard especially uh, resin or bresin uh, how they pronounce it they get their foam stored in there so it's a case of getting a paper towel dabbing it in the paint taking 90% of the paint off so you've got two you can see pretty much like this pretty much hardly anything on there and it's a case of just chipping over the whole tire spade I don't want my tools to be uh, completely trashed but I want them to be used and showing some paint the main spade can be worn quite down quite a lot I also imagine these are modern tools so they wouldn't be made of wooden handles I think they're probably made of metal because they last longer so that's the basics of the spade as for the handle you can just do it slightly over the handle all over the inside of the spade I'm not worried about too much because the tool faces downwards on the vehicle so it'll be facing this way okay for the next colour we're going to use the uh, brown custom mix again same technique as before dab it in take most of it off and this goes again all over the speed I think that shall do it so that's pretty much my spade used and weathered we're going to clear coat this and then we can put some dust and dirt on it which gives it a bit more texture but this is the basics we're going to go over and do over the four spades that go with the vehicle Howdy folks, the kit's all complete now. This is the Swedish CV90. It's done in the UN markings. It's a good kit. The only thing I did not like was the tracks. Um, they wasn't as good as I thought they were going to be. But other than the kit goes together nicely. It is straight out of the box. As for the colour, the white. They call it out for just plain white, but I had gone for insignia white. By uh, guns which is 316 um, basic weathering I did not do that on camera because you've seen me do weathering before it's just flurry washes all over and pigments for the tracks so this is a basic basic uh, weathering um, the only thing I other thing I did not like was the cupolas and the vision ports you can see that painted in blue they didn't give you any clear parts for those they just gave you clear lights clear for the lights you can do another option which is in the green which i'll do a, a later date like okay, a lucky enough for me i had two of these kits because i did have issue with the un markings they come as one giant symbol as u and the n together and as i stuck it in water they folded up on themselves um, but the second time of doing it i've done in separate letters and it's easier to do your uh, put down but it's a good kit you should check it out and buy one it's detailed for what it is um, you don't see many UN vehicles out there or white tanks in general um, I was quite tricky to figure out how I was going to weather it because it being white I didn't want to overdo it I've looked at most of the reference pictures on these vehicles and they're not massively beat up they they do get dusty and grimy but they're not massively beaten up they they are looked in looked after 
in good condition. So this is my version of the Swedish CV90 in the UN markings. Like, comment, subscribe and I'll catch you later.